In this lesson, we're going to do some subnetting practice. So when we get to the point, you'll want to pause the video and try along yourself. So for the first one, you're the network administrator, and the company has decided to locate a small branch office in another city. To support the new location, you'll need to subnet the private IP address range that your boss gave you into several smaller networks to provide services to each department. The new office location has been assigned 10.10.10.0/24. When you set up the new network, you need to configure separate subnets for each department in the new office. You should allocate the address using CIDR notation and provide each department with the minimal number of IP addresses that will meet their needs. The departments at the new location will require their, the following numbers of computers on their subnets. For the IT department, it'll be 54. The instructors will be 32. Sales will be 5, and administrative will be 3. Subnetting practice. In this lesson, we're going to do three sample subnetting problems. When we get to that portion, you're going to want to pause the video and try them on your own before revealing the answers. For the first problem, you're a network administrator and the company has decided to locate a small branch office in another city. To support the new location, you need to subnet the private IP address range your boss gave you into several smaller networks to provide services to each department. The new office location has been assigned a 10.10.10.0 slash 24 IP address range, which gives you 256 IPs. When you set up the new network, you need to configure separate subnets for each department in the office. You should allocate the addresses using CIDR notation and provide each department the minimum number of IP addresses that will meet your needs. The departments at the new location will require the following number of computers on their subnets. IT needs 54, instructors need 32, sales needs 5, and administrative needs 3. When complete, you're going to summarize these subnets into their own subnets using slash or CIDR notation. So if you memorize the problem, the, the table on the left, the problem becomes very easy. First, you're going to round up the number of departments to the next highest multiple of two. Remember that numbers are provided are for the computers, so we still need to add two IPs to account for the network and broadcast. So for the IT, we're going to be looking at 54 plus 2, which will give us 56 IPs which then rounds up to 64 IPs that will be assigned. Remember, the two are for our broadcast in our network. Next, for the instructors, we have 32. So we're going to have to add two and make it 34, which then rounds up to 64 as well. So IT and instructors will both have the same number in their CIDR notation. Next, we have sales, and they have 5 plus 2, which gives us 7. We'll round that up to 8, and that will give us the number of IPs assigned for that subnet. For administrative, we're going to have 3 plus 2, which then gives us 5, rounding up to 8. So again, sales and admin will both be sharing the same number in their CIDR notation, but they will be separate subnets. And finally, we have the unused portion. For the unused portion, what we need to do is add up all the previously used IPs, 64 plus 64 plus 8 plus 8. And when we do that, that's going to end up giving us the 256 we started with, minus that total of 64, 64, 8, and 8, giving us 112 left. Now. The real question becomes, do we take that 112 and round up to 128, making it a slash 25, or down to 64, making it a slash 26? And the answer is, because it's the unused portion, we're going to round down. Everything else we rounded up because we're going to use those portions, but for the unused, we need to round down. Otherwise, we're telling our network administrators, we still have 128 IPs, but in reality, we only have 112. So we really have to go down to 64. And that's what we're going to look at. So, as we look through this, 64 IPs becomes a slash 26, 64 IPs for the instructors becomes a slash 26, 8 for the, for the sales and administrator are both going to become a slash 29, and the unused portion at 64 becomes a slash 26 as well. And that's how you'll solve a problem like that. For the next problem, we want to figure out how many assignable IP addresses exist in a 172.16.1.0 slash 27 network. Okay, so for this one, what we're going to want to do is we need to look at the keyword here of assignable. So if we look at a slash 27 in our chart, we see that the number of IPs is 32. 
But that's not the right answer because we have to take into account our network address and our broadcast. So we have to take away two. So again, we pull out slash 27 from the chart, which is 32 minus two, which will then give us our answer, which comes out to 30. Our final problem, problem number three, is the same as the last problem in that we want to find the number of assignable IP addresses for a 192.168.1.0 slash 28 network. For a slash 28 network, we have 2 to the fourth number of IPs minus 2 for the broadcast and the host. So in this case, 2 to the fourth is going to give us 16. Minus 2 will give us 14. And that's our answer. And there's three subnetting problems for you to practice on your own. If you're looking for more subnetting problems, there are a bunch more, both on my Facebook page, my Twitter feed, as well as many other good websites out there that will provide you with hours of subnetting fun.